Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Christopher Shepard. Thank you all for tuning in. Today we have a great show. It's going to be very fantasy football heavy, especially concerning last night's game between the Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles. A crazy contest, a game-winning touchdown drive, a lot to recap. But we also have to look at the waiver wire as well. I want to do a deep dive there because of all the injuries stockpiling up, you might want to turn to the waiver wire for more crucial pickups. I'm also doing my personal fantasy QB and running back rankings for week three as we look ahead there because based off of favorable matchups should you wish to turn to the waiver wire there might be some guys on my list that could be someone you look at for starting this week and then last but not least we go back to week one we talk about a major injury that right now does not seem as serious could be a return for an injured player from week one sooner than expected so i want to update you all on that and the fantasy implications but before we get into any of it i do want to remind you to like follow and subscribe to the show in the network if you so choose it is greatly appreciated by all and you guys been doing a great job of this thing that i'm about to mention commenting super thanks super chat and super stickers are always a great way to communicate with me and interact with the show you have any questions comments concerns tips or donations anything of the like leave them here for me to address in the show because i always wish to include your input as well without further ado let's jump right into our first segment of the day concerning that game that happened last night what a game it was i mean if you're a fan of either of these teams, I don't necessarily think you are going to be very encouraged. If you're a Falcons fan, it's a nice little win. But just know that I don't necessarily believe that it was a deserved win. If you're an Eagles fan, you're definitely feeling hard done by right now because it was right in your hands, literally. And then to have Kirk Cousins, who up to that point didn't necessarily show me enough to say, okay, he's going to lead a game-winning touchdown drive, and to allow him to just march down the field as efficiently as he did should be very concerning as well. But I want to go over the best parts of this game in terms of fantasy stats and things of that nature. So without further ado, let's look into the positives. Kirk Cousins, let's talk about him. As Andre has entered the chat, let's talk about Kirk Cousins a little bit. Up to this point, last night's game is going to change my perspective on Kirk Cousins. I don't necessarily think leading a game-winning drive and creating a sense of optimism around your team wins you brownie points. As Andre also says, what a sigh of relief last night was for me as a Drake London owner. Kudos to you. He did have a nice performance. He wasn't as big as I thought he was going to be. He certainly was not the best Falcons wide receiver, in my opinion, as we'll get to in a little bit. But he did have that game-winning touchdown, and it was a saving grace. Unfortunately, he did not, you know, celebrate it correctly, so to speak, and almost, you know, had the game gone to overtime would have been to blame for that. But overall, Drake London did have a touchdown. So at the end of the day, you you can't be mad there if you're a Drake London owner like Andre. But Kirk Cousins, the thing about Kirk Cousins to me, as Andre says, at least we know he's the number one red zone target. Now, well, yeah, that's a sign of something, you know, because they were in the red zone very often in this game, and it's always good to, once you get there, have a contingency plan. But, you know, it's something that we're going to have to monitor as the Falcons begin to cohere a little bit more. But it was a very important win for them, I will say, because had they lost that game, I think they would have been beyond the point of no return. But let's talk about Kirk Cousins, because I feel like we need to. He did have a decent game, though. Stats-wise, 20 of 29, 241 yards, 2 TDs, and 17.54 fantasy points. So not the worst game. But if you were watching this game, I don't necessarily think you would say he passed the eye test. At least to me. So just be wary of the fact that while this game was a decent fantasy performance for Kirk, and he could pretend to be a serviceable, at least QB2 if you're in a deeper league or a 2QB league, you can flex more options. It doesn't necessarily give me that much hope. I'm still holding my breath 
waiting to see what this offense looks like against far superior teams. Now, I could say that I was more impressed by the skill players on Atlanta than I was with the ones on Philly, but that's not saying much because Philly was depleted, and Jalen Hurts actually did have a much better game, in my humble opinion, than Kirk Cousins in terms of distributing the ball to them. So make of this what you will in terms of Kirk Cousins' performance, but it's one that I'm not necessarily moved by if I'm a fantasy football manager. I would have been more moved had, you know, Kirk had done this efficiently throughout and Philly's defense wasn't, you know, trying to play prevent defense, which was atrocious, by the way. I don't necessarily think they should have. They had the advantage in that situation. They knew Atlanta needed to score a touchdown. Atlanta had all the pressure in that situation. So I don't know why you don't generate pressure in that situation, especially on a guy, a 35-year-old with a torn Achilles, who up to that point didn't prove that he could really harm you. So that's Another reason why Kirk stat-wise might be as inflated as Andre said, Mooney shocked me, bro. As I'm going to mention Mark Donald Mooney. Let's go to the Eagles side of things for a little bit because I do want to give love to what turned out to be not necessarily a disappointing performance in terms of the outcome, but performance that Jalen Hurts had to be hard done by because I thought he was exceptional last night. Creating out of structure, running the ball in certain situations, understanding situational football. I really don't think that this game was at fault because of him. He did everything he could have done to really try and push this offense on the field. Saquon as well. Saquon impressed me as well, but Jalen Hurts really took the cake as my fantasy star for the Eagles last night. 23 of 30, 183 yards, one TD, one interception, one touchdown on the ground with that tush push there at the end. 23.82 fantasy points. So as you can see, if you look at both QB performances stat-wise, you would say Kirk won the night. But if you actually look at the look what your eyes are showing you, I think that you could say that Jalen Hurts was the more impressive of the two here. Because in that situation... With the absence of A.J. Brown, who could have been the difference in this game had he played. With Britton Covey, basically, as your wide receiver, too. He really stepped up to the plate. I know that a lot of penalties kind of set this offense back, especially along that offensive line. They're going to have to fix and adjust moving forward there. But with what he had, Jalen Hurts really showed out for me and really shocked me as well. Let's get to the Atlanta Falcons as well, because I want to show them some love. Even though their skill position players, you know, had some kind of issues as well, they still played much better, in my humble opinion, than the Philadelphia Eagles skill position players, and that was the difference. Let's talk about one in particular, Bijan Robinson. 14 carries, 97 yards, 16.2 fantasy points. Now, this isn't the kind of performance that would, you know, really sh say that, Bijan is going to be RB3, and the, the proof is in the pudding with this one. But it is a performance that gives you hope for him in this Raheem Morris offense because that's what he said. Bijan's going to get a lot of touches in both the running and receiving game, and he did last night, and he made the most of them. He had a couple bad plays, but overall, I liked Bijan last night, and it really gave a sense of optimism for how he fits into this offense schematically. Now, I was also impressed by Tyler Rozier as well, and that gives me pause about what the future of this Falcons offense means for the backfield share there as well. But for now, Bijan's performance really sheds light upon how they can diversify this room if, you know, other skill position players are struggling a little bit because at certain times it did feel that way where, you know, while London had a couple of nice catches and pits, you know, kind of got involved, they didn't necessarily move the football down the field. And so having both Bijan and Algier kind of set the tone in early downs really helped them out a lot. So look for this backfield to really be an intriguing one in terms of fantasy implications. Well, let's get to Andre here because he said that Darnell Mooney shocked me. He shocked me as well because... I really actually kind of liked him coming out of Chicago, and 
Now that he's on Atlanta, I was kind of skeptical about how he was going to fit into this offense that seemingly felt like it had everything figured out except the quarterback. But last night, you can't say that he wasn't the top receiver in that game, even with Devontae Smith playing in it as well. Three catches on seven targets, 88 yards, the one touchdown, 17.8 fantasy points. And going forward, he could be a huge asset if, you know, they want to open up the game vertically. And yes, it will all rely on Kirk, you know, trusting his short, to, his intermediate to long ball. But at the end of the day, having a guy like Mooney there to catch long touchdown passes like he did last night is really helpful. And it kind of calmed that uh, the Falcons' offense down a little bit to have that long play. So, Darnell Mooney, I don't necessarily think he will project to be someone you can rely on week in and week out. But he is kind of a nice flex option or a bench option to have to use in certain situations, especially in deeper leagues as well. So look out for Darnell Mooney because this performance was a statement performance from him on a night when skill position talent was the difference here. So what we learned from this game in terms of fantasy, or at least what I learned, is that both of these teams are kind of similar but also different in how they view their setup. I think that Atlanta took more advantage of every single position player that they had in certain situations, and they were able to do so on that final drive, even though it was mainly about Philadelphia's defense being just appallingly atrocious at that point, rather than, you know, them actually taking advantage of anything. But And then on the Eagles side of things, this could be a well-oiled machine. It's just that nothing clicks when not everyone is there. And also, the O-line is something to monitor as well. I think that it played better than I thought it would. But they still had a lot of penalties, a lot of mishaps. So we're going to have to look at them in the future as well. But overall, very exciting game. Let me know what you think in the comments about it. But coming up next, we transition from Monday Night Football to the waiver wire some interesting guys out there right now on the market especially for someone who wants to be advantageous like myself and go out and get in and be aggressive in that regard so we'll be right back after this short break to talk about the waiver wire <laughs> 